So we've spoken a lot in the introduction about like how we go use an architecture such as MVVM, but what is MVVM? So basically MVVM is the design pattern. So design patterns, this isn't just in iOS development, this is in software engineering in general, all software development, which is both the same thing, are basically in engineering, a general reusable solution to reoccurring problems. But what does that actually mean? So just to give you an example in Swift, there's something called bloated view controllers. Now a bloated view controller is a view controller that is really big. Everything is inside of one file, nothing separated. You can't reuse stuff. So what design patterns allow us to do is it basically allow us to separate out code into more reusable chunks and also as well help us improve our testability as well now there isn't just one design pattern and one design pattern does not just fit all so just to show you an example these are all the possible design patterns and there's some more as well because people are coming up with new ones every single day that um you could use and as you can see this is quite a lot of design patterns so let's look at all of them. So we've got MVC, we've got MVVM, Singleton, MVVM, C. The one we're going to be focused on is MVVM. Now, why are we using MVVM? Well, it's quite a popular design pattern that's using a lot of iOS um, applications. And it's actually pre preferred over MVC, for example, because of the fact that it doesn't allow you to have bloated view controllers, like I said before. So. That's why we're focused on focusing on this design pattern. It's also worth noting as well, you might see something in the top right hand corner called MVVMC. Now what that is, is the same thing as MVVM, except you use a concept called coordinators. Now that's a bit too much for this tutorial, but in the future, I will discuss um, coordinators and we'll do this design pattern. And to be honest with you, in the future, We've got time, don't worry man, we've got time. We'll actually focus and do all these design patterns here and see where their use cases are. But for now, let's just focus on MVVM. So breaking down MVVM a bit more, what does it actually stand for? So MVVM stands for Model View View Model. So Model View View Model is basically what it means. And if we start at the, end, the tail end, we basically have our model. So our model is basically like a single source of truth. So this is our data structure. So if we ever had like um, some sort of data that we need to represent in the app, we would basically just create it in a model. And this can be either a struct or a class. So the, mo the model's responsibility is just to define the data source, the data. So next up, we have the view model and the view, the model interacts with the view model. So the purpose of the view model is purely just to basically contain all our business logic so we can manipulate the model if we need to. But all our business logic is going to be stored in our view model. And then finally, we have our view. Now, the responsibility of the view is the presentation layer. So presentation being a view, a UI view or a view controller. So what we'll do, so what we do here is we basically use the view, the view model in the view to basically interact and get some data or we'll use the view to interact with the view model to change some data within the model. So let's apply this to our example of what we're working on right now. So in our case, our model is going to be our team, our team struct at the moment. And this is where we define all the data for each team. So the name, the year that is founded, the, um, the manager, the job type, and the badge, all that information. If the, if the team channel is playing, is defined in the model. Our view model is where we basically have our array of teams. And this is where we contain this and where we're gonna put our business logic so in the next coming in the next videos, we'll basically use our view model to manipulate whether the model is playing a sound or it isn't playing a sound. We'll also use our view model to basically get data from the model and present that to our view. And on our view, we basically have in our chance view controller, this will use the view model to display teams in our list, aka table view, and we'll also use it to basically interact with our view model to basically change whether the team is playing or not. Now that's a lot to take in and I'd highly recommend you go back and just re-watch this video 
and also whilst watching this video maybe make some notes and see where we do each one of these steps in the upcoming videos now it's probably worth noting as well it's fine not to know all these design patterns even me myself who's a lead app developer i don't know every single design pattern it's virtually impossible and to those of you i like enjoying my life a bit too much so i don't just spend all my time just at home learning design patterns the only thing you need to know is you basically need to just learn how to get into the habit of researching what design per pattern is suitable for your needs and with by doing that you'll be exposed to more design patterns naturally so just get into the habit of doing research making a decision on what design pattern fits your needs and then going from there onto the next stage of actually starting to develop the piece of code that you're working on so in the next part of the video, we're actually going to set up our model, which is the first step, as you'll see, we'll set up our team's model and then we'll carry on from there. So let's get started. We're going to be basically creating our model for our list that we created in the previous video. So we can actually start to see and start building some of the teams um, from in this app. So for the model, we're basically using structs. Now you're probably wondering what structs are. So all structs are, are they're basically just objects which um, are a value type. So when you create a struct, um, it basically creates a copy of that object um, and they're very lightweight um, as compared to com creating a class, which is a reference type. And when you create it, it's in memory. So if we were to create a struct and, you know, if we were to change one of the properties, it would create a new copy of that object versus if we create a class, and we change one of the properties in the class because it's a reference type in memory, that single reference will change. So we're gonna get started with that. So in order to do that, I'm going to go here on our app, I'm gonna create a new group called model. And inside of model, we're gonna create a new file. This is just gonna be a Swift file. So a new file, Swift file next and then we're going to call this file team okay awesome so next thing we're going to do is just, we're just going to basically create the base of our struct and our struct's going to have a mixture of properties and constants so i will talk you through what they are in a second so let's just type this out so we're going to create a new struct called team and then we're going to create this name and then string and then we're going to create another property called info this is going to be a type string and we're going to create another constant called founded which is our type string and then we're going to create a property called is playing and this is going to be a variable and it's going to be a boolean and we're going to set this to false so whenever you have a property that's been marked with the keyword let that means that this is a constant, meaning that you can't change the value. Once it's been set, it's been set. And whenever you have a property which has been marked with var, then this is a variable, meaning that you can change the value. So in this case, the type is bool. So we can either change this to true or false. So what we're actually gonna do as well, because if you look at the designs, um, this is the title or the name, I should say, this is the info. Do we have information on when the um, club was founded? But we also have this here, where we actually have the manager. And you can also see on other cells, we also have an head coach. So how do you separate the two different types of jobs? Well, this is where we have to create another struct and we have to use Edoms. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to create a new file in this model folder and we're actually gonna call this manager and then this is also gonna be a struct manager and as you can see if you look at the designs we have the name of the manager and the manager needs a job type so if your job is a manager or if your job is a head coach so let's first of all create the name so this is what we put a manager name and then to separate the job type we're just basically going to create an enum so we go create a new enum called job type and then the first case we're going to have is manager and then the second case we're going to have is head coach 
and then inside of the manager we're actually going to use this enum type so we can differentiate between what's a manager sorry not what who is a manager and who is a head coach so let uh, job and then of type job type so now we're actually going to use this struct in our team so let's go back to our team and we're going to create a new constant here called let manager job type cool so we're just going to basically do it like that so and uh, the next thing that we will want to do is drag the view model uh, with our teams onto here but actually before we do that we need to actually uniquely identify each one of these cells so what i'm just going to do is i'm actually going to create a new uh, constant here using the same technique oh well, that's actually a mistake so this is sorry so this should actually be manager not job type so we're actually going to create a new id here and this is going to be team type so now we have if we just look at this we have the id we have the name we have the info we have the manager we have the founded and we have the is playing so we can start to see hopefully you can start to see how this is starting to match up to each um cell so the next thing that we need to do is we need to actually drag the um, view model that I've created for you into the project. So like I said in the previous the previous previous um, assets and resources video, if you just basically go into that folder that you downloaded, you should see a new folder here, view model. And if you don't have this, because you just jump straight to this video, I'll put the link in the description so you can download these assets as well. And then what we're just gonna basically do is just take this folder view model and we're gonna drag it into our project here, like so. And we're gonna have a copy. I just need this tip. We're gonna create group selected and we've got football chance targets uh, selected two and hit finish. Cool. So now if we go into this file and we just open it up. You can see here how this um, array is called. So this array of objects, so it's just like a collection of objects, um, almost maps against what you're seeing in the UI. So we're going to the first one. You can see the first one here is Arsenal, and the second one here is Aston Villa, and then the third one is Brighton, and so on and so forth. So we basically create an array because we want to have a collection of teams so we can basically loop through the teams. And you can see here that we use this ID to uniquely identify each team in the array. And you can see here that we have this here called private set. So you're probably wondering what does private set mean? So private set basically means you can have this um, variable private to this file so you can access this variable from outside of this file, but you can only change it within the file. So I can't change this array from outside of Teams view model, but I can within it. So just to show you an example of that, if I also go inside of this chance view controller here, and just if I just go into view to load here, if I just type Teams, Uh, view model dot teams and if I try and replace this with an empty array it will not allow me to so you can see here cannot assign to property teams setter is inaccessible so we can't change it from outside of the class but we can from within it so if we go inside the teams view model we can actually change it inside of here and it won't complain so if I just create a function at the bottom here I'm just gonna call it X just just for this purposes we're actually gonna delete this because we don't want to leave this in but I can say teams is equal to an empty array and it doesn't complain so let's just delete that okay cool so 
in the next video we're actually going to talk about our table view cell um, we're actually going to break it down we're actually going to break this down and talk about how we can build this using auto layout so i guess stick around and let's move on to the next um, video